things we want to look at is an electron emitting a photon. And so if we have time and space on an axis like this, we'll look at another one in here in just a moment, uh, we can say that as time passes by, um, it's going to be moving in space. We'll put our electron in here, at the end of our line, and then up. And at this point in time, it's going to emit a photon. That photon will be a, a wiggly line off this direction. And once it emits that photon, make sure to put our arrows in over here. Once it emits that photon, then it will turn and go back the other direction. I'll we'll put our arrow on it here. So it could be emitting a photon. So in this case, time moving this direction. In space, it's going to be moving one way and then moving backwards. And so if it's flipped the opposite direction, what's going to happen is this is just going to be uh, moving this direction in time. So this whole thing will be flipped sideways. So if we wanted to, we could say electron is going to be moving forwards in time and forwards in space. So we'll do this. Make sure our electron is down here. And that electron then, once it emits a photon, that photon will go off in the opposite direction, or orthogonally to it. Then at that point in time, it will come back. And we still have an electron at the other end. So both of these should have an electron at each end. If we want to have an electron absorbing a photon, well, we need to draw that photon coming in. So we'll draw our gamma symbol here, and we'll draw that photon coming in. And at the same time, as time is passing, something is getting closer here, and that's going to be our electron. So let's put our electron up here. Our electron is going to come closer, and at that point where they meet each other, the electron is going to be absorbed. And that electron then is going to change direction and go off this way after it has absorbed that photon. We could draw a positron emitting a photon. And the interesting thing about a positron If our positron is emitting a photon, remember, that's a positive beta particle. So a positive beta particle is an antiparticle. And so an antiparticle is actually going to travel backwards in time. So we can start with a positron here, or an E+, plus, and we can draw a line moving this way. And after it emits a photon, it's going to change direction. But first off, what we want to do is to make sure that we know it's an antiparticle. So instead of going this way in time, you'll notice that it's going to point backwards in time because it's an antiparticle. And once it emits that photon, we can make that a squiggly line, gamma. It's going to go in the opposite direction again. But once again, we have to make sure that it's an antiparticle. We have to show that it's an antiparticle. So we're going to make our arrow in the opposite direction again. So this is a positron emitting a photon. Similarly, we could say a positron absorbs a photon. So we could say a positron absorbing a photon. Let's draw one of those down here. And we could have our positron um, catching a photon. So the first thing we want to do is to have the photon coming in. So if the photon is coming in this direction and our positron is going to come in and catch it and then change directions, but because it's a positron we can call it an E plus and this E plus then is going to be an antiparticle 
It's going to travel backwards in time. And once it catches that photon, it's going to change direction. And we'll have an E plus on this side as well. So one of the things that we can talk about is matter and antimatter coming together and annihilating to produce energy. Because we could have a particle and an antiparticle come together. And this would be a same Feynman diagram or a similar Feynman diagram. And they come together in space. And meet together at a vertex. And my antimatter particle, of course, would have a backwards arrow. My regular matter particle would have a forward arrow. And when they came together, it would produce photons. Similarly, we can have another diagram where we have a photon actually coming in. Maybe even we angle it a little bit. Uh, we have a photon here. And at some point in time, that photon has a vertex, which breaks into two particles, one actually moving forwards in time moving backwards in time. This could be our electron. This could be our positron. Here we've got pion decay, and we've got a positive pion with an anti-down and an up quark, and they can come together, since they are together already. Our up is going to move forward in time, down is going to move backwards since it's an antiparticle. It's going to come together to form a boson. And that boson then is going to be our W plus boson. And then it's going to split again into two particles. One will be our neutrino. This will be a muon flavor. And a muon lepton. And because this is an antiparticle, it will also move backwards. This one will move forwards. And so this is pion decay. And my up quark emits a gluon, which turns into a down anti down pair. So the first thing I'm going to do is have my up quark moving in space and time. What I'll do is I'll have my up quark moving this direction and at some point in time when it emits a gluon it's going to change direction. So I'll put in my arrows since it's a matter particle. Make sure my arrows are going that direction. And then the gluon is going to be mediated by the strong force which is going to be the gluon, let's actually write it, the gluon is going to decay into a down anti down pair. And so this will be my vertex here. I have my down particle here and my anti down particle here. The anti down particle, I have an arrow going backwards in time. The matter particle, I have an arrow going forwards in time. Now we'd like to look at beta negative decay. And beta negative decay can be represented in two different ways. One of the ways is with baryons. And you remember baryons are made of three quarks. Or we can actually represent it with quarks. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to use it with baryons. And baryons, as you remember, are protons and neutrons. In this case, we're going to have a neutron decaying into, at some point in time, 
a proton. So we'll have an inflection point here, and then we'll have a proton up here some time later. And our arrows will go this direction, since they are matter particles. At this inflection point, we're going to have a dotted line, which is going to be the weak force in this case. And the weak force then is going to split into two different particles, which will travel forward in time as well. And we'll have an electron as well as a neutrino, an electron flavored neutrino, but a particle and an antiparticle always come together. So we'll have an anti electron flavored neutrino. And that's for baryons. Let's draw one with quarks. If you remember, our quarks, if we have a neutron, our neutron is made of an up, down, down quark. And our proton then is made up of a up, up, down. And that's something that we should be able to remember. And so instead of this case over here where we have a neutron turning into a proton, let's actually show the quark changing. And in this case, we're going to have a neutron changing into a proton, so it's really going to be that D quark, which will turn into a U quark. So let's start with a D quark down here, and at some point in time it will travel forward in time, some inflection point. At that inflection point then, we're going to have a weak force particle come out, and that weak force particle then is going to split into two different particles as well. And so let's put in some arrows here. This is a matter particle, so it will go forward in time. This is also a matter particle, which is going to be our up quark. Our down turns into an up quark. We have an exchange particle here, or a boson, and then we have two other particles coming out which are familiar our electron going forward in time and our electron flavored anti-neutrino which is going to go backwards in time. Now these particles here, what charge are they going to carry? Well if we start out with a neutral neutron and it changes into a positive proton, well we know the charge that it carries away needs to be in this case negative. So the weak force is going to be a W minus boson carrying that negative charge away. This is beta negative decay with baryons and with quarks.